This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. When we think about the COVID-19 vaccine hesitancy in the black community, let's remember it didn't happen by chance. It's justified in history. But the will to change the narrative is strong today, and our people are lending their voices to the conversation. We're sharing our stories and the reasons that made us choose the vaccine so we can lead the way for others to make a well-informed choice, too. To hear our stories, visit hereforuswa.org. The Men's Room returns with Miles and Thrill. All right, now for all TV news all the time, it's time for TV Time with Ted. And now, because your pathetic life is confined to countless hours in front of a talking box, the Men's Room presents TV Time with Ted. Ah! All right, we were talking about it earlier. Everybody knows, if you don't know, Mother's Day is Sunday. Mm -hmm. Probably a little late to get that, uh, get something sent. Mm -hmm. But you could still find a card, maybe find some flowers. Got my card game taken care of yesterday. Oh, nice. Where'd you finally go? They finally had them in the store downstairs. So every day this week, I went to the store. As of Monday, I'm like, man, just get it done. Just so you don't forget. You know, that's the worst thing. So I come. it was my first order of business. Get into work. Go to the store downstairs. She has cards Mm -hmm. for everything. She did not have Mother's Day cards. Finally on what? No, it was yesterday morning. I'm in there. and, and, And I'm just checking absently again. And finally, she goes, are you looking for Mother's Day cards? I'm like, yeah, man. She's like, I got them in. They're in the back corner. Got it taken care of. And I told her, don't let me hang it like that, man. Come on. So I ordered four pounds of sand. I got to say, I like the blatant refusal to check another store. Right. No, because <laughs> I love my mother. <laughs> I refuse to walk the block and I have to mm-hmm. bar so uh, I'm not going to do what it. What about for your wife? I'm not walking to bar Well, man. did you get her a card? Yeah. Okay. Dude. All right. No, look, you got to understand. From the kids or from the dog? Now, understand, I did not buy a Mother's Day card for my mother. And most married men know this. My wife took care of that. However, now that my wife is also a mother, I have to get her card. Like, for years, before we had kids, it was just like, hey, man, Mother's Day is is Sunday, so call your mom and sign this card Mm -hmm. that I already bought. It was great, right? Now, I got to be on top, and you're right. It can't just be me. You just have to get one uh, from the kids. This is what's great about divorce. See, my first yeah. wife, she was the mother of my children. Mm-hmm. I have no obligation to get her card. Right. Because right, no, you're not married no, to her. Yeah. yeah. Hell with it. Right. Yeah. So easy. Uh, I did uh, give my mom four, pound, four pounds of salmon from Pike Place Market. Oh, nice. So sometimes they give, depending on what they've got, they give uh, fillets, individual stuff. Apparently this year, it was just one giant fillet. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. And according to my mom, my grandmother said, I didn't know fish could be that big. <laughs> that, that, so apparently it's just a monster piece of fish. Did you also get them a card? Hell no. I just put a little note in there. You know, like, uh, my mom, eat some fish. I'll say, my mom, she's about the only person I'll get a card. She's the only person I know that cares that much about a card. My, it's very important to my mother. My brother, when he uh, first went to college, moved out of the house, got his own job, he was very good about remembering Mother's Day. But, and this used to piss my mother off, because he, he, he lived in a different city. So he'd mail this thing in, always got there on time. And she'd open the envelope, and he was one of those dudes, and this is no be it. He would write kind of a sweet note, you know what it is, his mom. But, and it was handwritten, it was never a card, but it was always a piece of graph paper. But it wasn't even a whole piece of graph paper. He, like, as much room as the note took to write, he would then tear around that. Like, fold it, and, and it just, it drove my mother crazy. She was like, God damn it. So she actually bought him blank cards, right? So for okay. any sent them back to him and just said, if you're going to send me another one of these goddamn notes, it better not be on a torn piece of paper. Well, my I mo- thought it was amazing. Well, my mother doesn't understand. It's like this year, I'll be the first to wish her a uh, happy Mother's Day. All right. Because if Arsenal plays early on Mother's <laughs> Day, I'm just up. <laughs> right. All right. Uh, Jimmy Fallon actually had some pros and cons with Mother's Day. Pro, it's the one time of year to truly appreciate the person who gave birth to you. Con, by sending her the cheapest option from the Edible Arrangements website. <laughs> Pro visiting your mom for the weekend. Con spending the entire time helping her log into her Netflix account. And like, well, the password is password. Pro giving mom a beautifully written card. Con giving dad the same card for Father's Day and saying this but you. Yeah. <laughs> you, you get the idea, right? Yeah, yeah, we care about you too. Pro loving your mom for being exactly who she is. Con a person who calls Zach Galifianakis Jack Galifian the Galifian. Gal- 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 uh, pro splurging on something pricey. Con, like a full tank of gas. Hey, that's hey, what I'm talking about. Hey, watch it. Yeah, that's right. 
pro hearing mom say the greatest gift I could ever receive is you. Con, although Maureen's son got her a tennis brace. <laughs> Just saying. Pro taking your mom out to the one place she loves most. Con, the corner slot machine at the Golden Nugget Casino. <laughs> there you go. That the pros and cons. Everybody knows Maureen's have the best sons. <laughs> All right, we're going to stick with the Mother Day, Mother's Day stuff here. Uh, the actress who played Harriet Winslow on Family Matters. That was the mom. Yeah. Remember, uh, uh, J- Jaleel White. Uh, he's Urkel. He's Urkel. But remember, he's the neighbor. Right. He is not, well, was not supposed to be the main star of the show. Correct. So in an uh, interview with Entertainment Tonight, uh, she said there was one time he actually tried to physically fight me. There was a scene where I said, we can't do that. Uh, there was a scene, and I said, we can't do that. Standards and practices will not let it pass. It's not going to happen. So then Jaleel White got so upset, he threw a fit. Uh, the actress walked off set. Somehow that made him even angrier. Uh, he said something about, she must, want a, she must want to melee. I said, what's a melee? He said, a fight. Only Urkel would be mad. Melee. And in the heat My question of is, anger... What the hell did they write for that show where the mom <laughs> says, no, we can't do this, and then Urkel loses his ass? <laughs> so what, what, right, was the, what was the premise? He, wanted to, he literally wanted to physically fight her. Now, I will say, she ends the interview by saying, keep in mind, he's the star of the show, and he's a teenager. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, yeah, he's, still, he's still a kid. She's basically like, the adults on the show just let him do whatever the hell he wanted because he was so popular. Right? Yeah. Yeah, but it's just kind of funny. Like, yeah. But she was like, yeah, I don't, I don't blame him. kind of wondering she, what the script was, though, that... Yeah, she, she was, has to say like, she was nah. like, hey, guys, seriously. And he was like, no, let's go. Let's go. You want a yeah. melee. I just didn't see that being that type of show that would get edgy. It was super edgy. Apparently so. <laughs> if you had to pick a, uh, you got to live with the TV family, who is it? Mother's Day is coming up, right? People always love, what, Carol Brady from the Brady Bunch. Man, that's a tough call. Right, it is. Because it depends what kind of life you legitimately think you're going to lead. Like, Carol Brady seems nice, but I would not want to live in that household. Yeah. I mean, it's easy to say, like, Silver Spoons. Silver Spoons. Because they're rich. Because they're rich. Right. But is that the best? Uh, I don't know, man. You know, but then there's also, like, The Sopranos. As a kid, you're not necessarily getting targeted by all the mob stuff, but you get the benefits of your dad, you know, doing what he does. I mean, I hate to, you know, I hate to go here, but it's a tough, tough way he was uh, being raised. But uh, the mom on All American's pretty good. Oh mom. my god! <laughs> I'll, go, I'll, go, I'll go. I'll go. Uh, I'll go. Sopranos. <laughs> Take Sopranos. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I'm Even trying. The Bundy family, right? So you have Alan Peck Bundy. It wasn't the greatest family dynamic, but as a kid, look, you probably grow up to be a disaster. But the kids on the show could get away with a lot, right? So as a teen, you want to sneak out of the house, like. They were kind of cool with mm-hmm. that. I mean, the Wonder Years was just too realistic. Well, Sopranos, I think a lot of people look. grew up with a nice mom and kind of a surly dad. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, I bet 50% of the country, we already like, grew up with that. You, That's you, your life. In the mob world, of the, of the Italian mob world, you don't hit that main guy. And if you do, that's right. all hell's going to break loose. But you would never insult or touch a family member. So you right. are scot-free. You have the run of the town. You you could be the biggest J.O. in the world. and You, could you still, probably are. And you could still... Get away with it. Uh, somebody here says the ta- which one were the Tanners? Was that oh, Full uh, House? that's Full House. That is Full House. All right. Somebody said, "Wait, what was their dynamic though?" So I never. Wa- I was just a little too old for the show. So, so there's Danny- all these uncles and stuff. But was there a mom there? No. So Danny Tanner's there. The mom. I don't know if maybe he was a widow. Or, or yeah, widow, <laughs> widower. <laughs> yeah. Right. So then, right. The two. The two. Like the two other guys uh, live there with them. All right. And then right, Uncle Jesse. He would have uh, his his girl would show up, but yeah, I don't I don't think Danny Tanner actually had a wife. Okay, but I guess man, I'm sure they addressed it at some point. Uh, somebody, this is good. They say, look, controversy aside, the Huxtables. Right. This is not Bill Cosby as your dad, but as the Huxtable family was. Actually, man, I, 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 you, got, you got a doctor and uh, you got a doctor and a lawyer. And but a lawyer. It's not even mm-hmm. that. It's like financially they're sound, but honestly, you got the Huxtable family. For my experience, no, Corey, other no, than the fact no, that we moved around no, a lot, no. that was my family, basically. Well, I was and I'm kids, with you. but you were held to a certain standard. Right. You know what I mean? And he wasn't That's like, it. he was a, t- like, again, like, take away Bill Cosby yeah. as an actor, but you're right. As a TV dad, 
he wasn't nearly as like mean and surly as no, the no, other no. ones. But like he, he was always not. he but taught the, he taught a lesson. Right. I mean, so I'm with you. I probably would you, take the. It nuptials. always seemed like he needed to sit down and, and you were in trouble. Yes, you yeah, are in I, trouble. I, I, he I just wasn't like the Sopranos. <laughs> I'm not going to be in trouble. I could do cocaine in a strip club that my dad owns. Yeah, but when you but, are, in but trouble. when you're a kid, like Tony Soprano couldn't couldn't be super fun to live with all the time. Whereas no. Doctor Huxtable, you're right. He taught lessons and everything, but he. I'm with you. Throw now. That's, somebody nailed that on the head. When I was a kid, I'm sure I wanted to live with that. Family. Uh, I mean, sure. but a fellow. Well, everyone, everyone, everyone did. Has anyone seen Shameless? William H Macy. My I've only seen a couple episodes. It. So I started watching probably like the last two seasons. It was a very good show. I did not mm-hmm. see the whole thing. While I deeply appreciate the unbreakable family bond in that show, I don't know if I'd want to grow up in that house. Basically, Dad's kind of a freeloading drunk. Drug abuser. Everyone hates somebody. Keeps showing up anyway. That's William H Macy. The family is a complete disaster, but they always have each other's backs in spite of what they're up to. And everyone was up to no good. Selling drugs, selling guns, you name it. But yeah, very, very mm-hmm. strong family. Wait, could bar. you take cartoon families too? Could I live with the Jetsons? Yeah, but I think you go Family Guy. No. I, th- I was thinking talking, about Family you got Guy. A talking dog, dude. Well, one person understands. It. Yeah, right. You do have a talking dog. And then also the grandfather's rich. You get all that mm-hmm. angle. And, the and, wife, Pete, and Peter doesn't strike me as the strictest dad. No, but the wife, no. the wife is nice. The yeah. wife is nice. Yeah, she's very well, patient. She is. But oh, what's his name uh, uh, from South Park? Uh, what's his name? Dude is always selling weed. Randy. Oh, Randy. If Randy that's Marsh. your dad, right? You know what I mean? He's always trying to do something. Yeah, yeah, but remember the episodes where he's getting in fights at all the games? Like, yeah. Denver! I'm not he saying also, it's perfect. He also Denver! Pretty, there wasn't a Randy Marsh that said the word on Wheel of Fortune. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there's periods People where Randy Marsh might be you. okay, but yeah, overall, I'm like, I, I don't know if I really want to live People with that. People who annoy you. All right, the people say, uh, I'm a white guy, but hell yeah, Fresh Prince, 100%. Well, when he lives with the uncle. But Phil is pretty strict too, man. He was, he, he was. was. But that's again, that's he's just, not a bad guy. He's just, and I know how I was as a team. Like I'd, I'd been in trouble more than Will Smith was for sure. Yeah, and I didn't even really get into a ton of trouble as a team. Uh, me neither. I think I probably I mean, a little bit, but I think I probably got in more trouble as a kid or a teenager if you just tried to like duck out of a practice or the something. The only time I got in trouble right. is when my report card came. And that. Oh, that was guaranteed. Yeah, and that. Every, and that. every three months or whatever yep. it was. It was just like, okay, I'm going to get in trouble for this. Yeah, good call, Miles. <laughs> like, like, oh, oh, yeah, and that. Yeah, when... Always. God, man. It's never it's about a- my grades. It was always about your uh, your social uh, grades as far as your... Oh, how you behave in class. Demeanor. You know, like what oh, see, that was my... I always did fine in that stuff. But I it was like actual grades. The coach. But you know what else DeMatha the did? Was, you know, you get report cards, what, four times a year? Mm-hmm. So that's one thing. But DeMatha, man... If you're doing bad, they send home deficiencies halfway yes. through. Yes, yeah. So then it was like you had to. I had to look at that mailbox oh, eight oh, times God. a year. Yeah. yeah, you had to be on it, right? If you're effing up about halfway through the first quarter, or any given quarter, right? They send something home to let your parents mm-hmm. know your kid is already an idiot. And it wasn't half the time. Like I wasn't the instigator. We we had a group of friends. Sure, sure. And we would. You, inst- I don't. We've we never we, been an instigator. We would all instigate never. equally. So, but we would all get in trouble equally. So. There's five guys, and five guys are, they're all cracking up over something stupid. But your parents are only mad at one of them. And that's you. Yeah. Every time. Even if it was Pat's fault or whoever's fault. It was just like, look, that was funny. We can't stop laughing. I do think it's amazing that in the entirety of the time you went to high school, you were never responsible. I was responsible for, for anything you I was got in trouble for. for a lot. But <laughs> it was just yeah. like it ends up on Pat a It was lot. a band of brothers that were just being complete idiots. Sure. Well, well Pat's the one who broke in and took a crap on the uh, his grade book. <laughs> Opened <laughs> up and took a crap on it. I will say this. I had a teacher that I used to. I didn't do that. Do you guys remember Merton, Mort, Merton Hanks? Yeah. yeah. Right? And well, he, he had like a five foot neck. Right, but he had a like a cell. He throw his neck back and forth yeah. when he got an interception. So somehow in one of my math classes, I st- every day I would dunk a paper basketball and then do that and the whole class would go crazy so coach murphy neil i mean we're i I get lunch with him when i go back east but he he's always like man the first week or two i just wanted to send you the principal's office he goes but it became like a class highlight like everybody loved it every day like to the point where (laughs) it's not that right it'd be like smitty dunk the basketball right just get it out of your system so we can move on (laughs) basically yeah (laughs) let's uh right that's the other thing too like it's a tough day like smitty go dunk a ball all right, let's see. There's a lot of stuff on this weekend. I'm going to talk about some sports stuff. Obviously, you have the Kentucky Derby mm-hmm. running on Saturday afternoon. 
I can't believe you don't play bugle. Uh, what else? The uh, your Concacaf champions, Seattle uh, Sounders FC. They're at Dallas five thirty. Mm-hmm. I know there's a big boxing match on. Canelo's fighting. The main thing is, if you're like me, a lot of people in the recent years have gotten into F1 mm-hmm. because of the uh, Netflix series. They're racing in Miami. So don't get up early. 1230 on nice. a Sunday afternoon. Oh, that's right, the Miami race. Yeah, You can actually watch the race. Saturday Night Live will be a brand new episode. I'll also say this, too, about the, the, the Kentucky Derby. If you've never gone to Emerald Downs when they run that race, that's one of the great days. Oh, dude, I was telling a story the other day it's about awesome. being a teenager, and my brother and his friends took me to a racetrack on Derby Day, and it's still one of my favorite favorite like days mm-hmm. of my life. They either have one race after that, that they yeah, do, which yeah. is the main race, or it happens before. But either way, basically, you sit there, you watch a day of races, and then the big boys come on. You can you know, gamble on that as well. Mm-hmm. It's pretty yeah, fun. And day. honestly, if you, go day, down, if you go down to the racetrack and watch that race, like it's you can packed. dress up, too. It's packed. Yeah. They have mint juleps. I just... It's, it's an awesome afternoon. I think you wake up and you go, honey, break out that giant hat. <laughs> <laughs> the one you've been waiting for. <laughs> right. This is your day. <laughs> and bring the bourbon. Thank you, Ted. We appreciate it. You are listening to The Men's Room. Burns with Miles and Thrill. Now, let's see what's happening in the real world. All right, here we go. Two people are killed by a camel. They got loose from a zoo in East Tennessee. Meanwhile, are getting trapped in a bread machine. That is something that no co-worker wants to see because that person actually died. Yeah. Florida woman sunbathing on beach was run over by a cop driving on the beach. Woman poops all over her luxury condo, and they're all going to need some bleach. And a man opens emergency exit door in an airplane and jumps out. It's time for your headlines. Now, it's time to hit the head. Lines. Here's my cock. It is not my cock. It's thrill, and I have to be fast. Ted told me to be. So, here's a couple of headlines. A woman has died. First after- time hearing that, huh? <laughs> Sadly, not even today. A woman is died after getting stuck in a bread machine for an hour. Keep in mind, this is days after another woman died after getting stuck in a bread machine. The good news is two different factories, bad news, same city. Two bread machine deaths, one week. Check your bread. Mm -hmm. Two people were killed by a camel that became loose at a petting zoo in West Tennessee. Quick side note, if you believe the animals are going to kill people, maybe they shouldn't be at a petting zoo. Anyway, they got a call about a loose camel near Shirley Farms yesterday afternoon. They showed up. Both people were unconscious. Both ended up dying. That's they, crazy. Quote, unquote. But I'm just saying, if it's at a petting zoo, I know animals can kill you, but your thought process is, okay, I'm safe to touch this. I can pet the animal. Yeah, don't. We go to South Beach, Florida, where a deputy assigned to patrol the St. Pete Beach. He hit and ran over a beachgoer. Basically, they said he made a right turn from his parked position. When he drove over top of a 23-year-old woman that was lying on her back in the sand. Now, she did survive. She has a little damage to her mid to upper back area. But I love how they add this. The deputy involved, he was not injured. You know why? Because mm-hmm. he was in the vehicle. Truck. Yeah. yeah. Now we go to building management at Rio. That's a condo building in New York City. Units sell for millions of dollars. They're accusing an elderly resident of using the ledger building's pool as a toilet. After 83-year-old resident Helen Hirsch defecated in the fitness center pool, then again in the fitness center shower, the condominium was forced to shut down the fitness center pool so it could be properly sanitized and to take the fitness center shower out of use so that it could also be cleaned and disinfected. She says that it's not true. Quote, no, never. Do they have evidence? Ridiculous. I was a doctor before. But then she ended her quote with, maybe I'm getting old. Long story short, this 83-year-old lady keeps pooping. In the goddamn pool. I'm not sure she's there all the way. <laughs> I, I don't think she is. Ah, uh, well, there you go. There's your headlines for right now. In the meantime, uh, well, we're about to get the hell out of here. Yeah. And we'll be back in approximately 180 seconds or so. Who the hell knows? Don't hold us to that. <laughs> I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Remember, it's Mother's Day. Give your mom a hug because I plan to. You I'm going to give your mom a hug. So until then, do what you do best. And for Aletha's sake, stay beautiful. The men's room has been taped before a live studio audience. Wardrobe and makeup provided by Mantastic Limited. This has been a presentation of the Men's Room Radio Network. Oh, man! A double flush production.